Later on the program, we're going to find out whether there is a mystery to giving great service or receiving it for that matter. Author Ron Kaufman will join us for his insights. AM Live. Coming up on the program, we examine the concept of service in every human interaction. We'll meet author Ron Kaufman and find out what he means when he says the world is currently facing a crisis of service. Welcome back to AM Live. Now consider this, everybody is providing service to somebody else in every interaction. So whether you are a service provider or person being served, you want to pay some attention to this next interview. In other words, we're talking about everyone. <laughs> well, the concept of service is in deep trouble today, so much so that the world faces a crisis of service, at least according to our next guest, Ron Kaufman. He's the author of this book here. It's on New York Times at Best Selling Authors List. It's called Uplifting Service. We're going to say good morning to Ron. Hey, congrats on hitting the bestseller list. Yeah? Thank you very much. You must have provided some good service in this book. <laughs> <laughs> Provided some good service and told some good stories about service from right here in Singapore, right. which hit the bestseller list in the United States. Yeah, let's start with that, because you have used Singapore as your case That's study right. here for this book. I mean, right. why why'd you do that? Why'd I you think Singapore, over the 22 years that I've been living here, has been dramatically improving, uplifting, and upgrading the quality of service. Now, so, when, sorry, when you say uplifting, how yes. is that different from... Um, a better service. Good. So uplifting service really has several components. One is upgrading and improving the quality of service experience that you provide. Right. That one we're all familiar with. Mm -hmm. But the other one is uplifting the person that you're serving. Okay. So that they actually feel better. Not just that they got good service quality, but the way you serve them made them feel better. Okay. And the culture of the organization that you work in should also uplift the service providers. Okay, so it's all about making people feel better instead of providing a good service? Is well, it, it's not instead it's of, it's a part of. Okay. Right. right, my definition is taking action to create value for someone else. Part of that value could be accuracy, speed, precision, price. Yes. Singapore has always been very good in those areas. Yes. Right. But value can also be making somebody feel understood or appreciated mm -hmm. or given the time to explain something. Yep. And that's the human side. Can you give us some specific examples that you've used in the book? And when it comes to Singapore, I think you've used Changi Airport. Or... Changi Airport, Marina Bay Sands, and TUC Income. Okay. How have they given uplifting Great. service? So insurance is not exactly a very sexy product, mm. right? And so you go there because you want to be insured, you want to mm -hmm. be protected, you want to do your savings. But NTUC income has taken what was a very conservative culture and implemented what they called a cultural revolution on two key words, service alive. They want their policyholders to feel more alive every time they interact with the company, whether it's over the counter, over the phone, right. over the web, by email. Now, that's not just giving you a good insurance policy. That's actually taking care of you as a person. So I should feel good after a phone call with these chaps. I should leave the end the call and go, hey, I just bought some great stuff. I bought some great <laughs> stuff. Or you know what? They helped me solve a problem, or they listened to me, or they cared about my concern. Well, that's a tough part, because we're all uh, unique individuals. I mean, uh, and this is sort of an intangible aspect aspect of uh, sometimes they're due in part to the personality of the service staff, yes. which is why some staff at a restaurant, you know, they'll bring you a glass of water, whether they smile or not, they'll say, well, I mean, why does it matter? You've right. got your glass of water. That's why I say that the intangible part of a company, which is the culture of the company, is something that's absolutely critical for everyone to focus on. And this is really Singapore's next mm -hmm. challenge, mm -hmm. is not just to give good, technically accurate, proficient service, but to build a culture of uplifting service where everybody feels better about serving each other. But how can you teach that? Uh, you have to role model it. You have to create an entire environment that continually communicates and supports it. That's what's in the book, right. is the architecture of how Changi Airport, how Singapore Airlines, how NTUC Income, how Marina Bay Sands is actually building a culture of uplifting service. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are there proven steps to achieve that? That's why the subtitle is called The Proven Path. Mm. So part of it is education, not just training. Part of it is leadership's job, but leading from all levels, not just the people at the top. And then part of it is what I call the 12 building blocks of a service culture, like recognition, communication, and capturing voice of the customer. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, when you say education, um, you also believe that it should be taught from in schools. Absolutely. Starting very young. Yes. Why is that? Well, for example, at Tomasic Polytechnic, they've taken the curriculum that 
that we've designed that's now being used all over the world. And they're educating students before they go out to get their first job. Mm -hmm. Now imagine somebody comes to you on a job interview and they say, well, I've got my business diploma and I'd like a job. And someone else comes up and says, I've got my business diploma, but I also know what a customer is. I know what creating value means. I know what service is about. And I have some ideas. Who would you hire? The one who's been educated to uplift service. Right. Okay. So, I mean, this, this whole culture of service is something that, again, is, uh, might be quite new to some people. But, again, if they have to put it on and sort of act it out, then it might be a bit uh, false. Some people might feel, well, you know. The part that I think is new for Singapore is the change of mindset from what's in it for me, waking up with that little kiasu old mentality of how much can I get, and turning it around and saying, how much can I give? What can I do today to contribute to someone else? Confident that the more you put out, the more will right. come back. Well, you see, that's the easy part. You have a nice customer, it's easy to be nice to them. Yeah. It's the other ones, the other customers that are not so right. great, that's the tough part. And that's why the culture is so important. Because even when you're facing an angry customer who's banging on the table, you still want to be the person that can welcome them, appreciate them, and set them at ease. Mm -hmm. Well, as a customer, um, what tips do you have um, for receiving better service? Because as we also have a part yeah. to play, don't yeah, we? Yeah, that's a great a question. When you are the customer, you're the other half of the equation mm. in customer service. Mm -hmm. There's the service provider, they should provide uplifting service, but the customer can also have a big role to play. And you can be actually an uplifting customer, like express appreciation or get the service provider's name and use their name and say thank you. It can make a big difference. Mm, because I think over recent years, we've used uh, the phrase, you know, the customer is king. And, you know, if we don't get the service that we want, we say <laughs> customer is always right. Yeah. And I think to an extent, we've overused that, haven't we? Sort of abused that in a way yeah. as, as the customer. Yeah, I agree with you. And it's part of the crisis. It's part of the problem is people say, well, if the customer is king, what does that make me the slave? Mm. And so it creates this idea that being in service is in some way servile or subservient. Right. That's not the case. All of us are in service to each other in some way. Mm. It's really an uplifting service culture and society that we live in, and everyone can make a contribution. And I guess it's got to be across the board as well. I mean, a lot of times they'll say only the, the front end staff, you know, meeting clients, meeting customers need to be nice. The rest of you doesn't matter. But that kind of uh, breeds into the corporate culture, right? And in the fact, that's a very important point because the internal service providers, IT, HR, finance, legal, facility, security, yeah. if they give their colleagues better service, it makes it so much easier for them to serve the external customer better. And that's why an uplifting service culture is something that has to be built from the top to the bottom right. and inside and out. Mm. So bosses should be nicer too. Uh, <laughs> bosses definitely have a example, right? That's right. Well, what's your assessment of the service culture here in Singapore? I mean, how has it changed in recent years and where do you see it going? I yeah. think Singapore has dramatically improved service over the 22 years that I've been here. I think mm. we can all look around and see the infrastructure, the technology, the speed, the accuracy. It's the spirit side. Mm. It's the hardware side that everyone can now step up and make a contribution. To walk out in the world today and say, my job is to uplift somebody else. My job yeah. is to make my colleague and my customers not only get good service but feel better. Mm, that's going to take quite a while to change, don't you think? Well, that change of mind only takes a moment and a culture is where everybody's doing it and encouraging and appreciating everybody else for doing it too. And what about for customers? What one piece of advice would you have for them? If you have a complaint as a customer, you yeah. have a choice. You can be the one that bangs on the table and insists on good service and you might get it. Or you can be the one that approaches and says, you know, I am your customer and I have a situation. I would really appreciate your help so that I can remain a loyal customer. Well, if you're the service provider approached by someone like that, you're going to go out of your way to help them. That's true. Okay. Very right. interesting stuff. Thank you so much. Thanks, for Thank you so much for uplifting service. <laughs> We've been speaking to Ron Kaufman. We wish you all the best in your mission to improve customer service around the world. That's right. Just talking about his new book, Uplifting Service, which has peaked in several online book retailers since its launch in Singapore and the US last month. Uh, pretty interesting read. So especially if you're in the service industry, you might want to give it a read.